The following is an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network. This is Eagle Talk on the NCCU Sports Network. Here's your host, Chris Hooks. Hello, Eagle fans. It's homecoming 2014. We welcome you to another edition of Eagle Talk. Talking football here on this segment of the program. We're going to bring on the head football coach here at North Carolina Central, Jerry Mack. We'll also bring on a stellar receiver that transferred from Georgia Military that is really making his mark in the MEAC, Quinn Atkinson. Certainly having a great year here at North Carolina Central. Again, thanks for joining in on today's show. We'll keep you up to date on all 14 sports on NCCU Athletics by going over to nccueaglepride.com, the official website of NCCU Athletics. Again, we bring on the head coach of the football program here at North Carolina Central. Coach, let's go ahead and backtrack to the game against Bethune-Cookman. You gave the 20th ranked team of the country uh, an absolute scare this past weekend. Well, you know, we gave them a scare, but it wasn't good enough. You know, our young men, they came out and I, I give them credit. They played their hearts out. Uh, for about 3.75 quarters. Uh, it was just one of those situations in the end. I think the strength and the, and the numbers and the depth kind of caught up, caught up with us uh, in the tail end of the game. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. You look back and, you know, they made a lot of mistakes in this game that, that we weren't able to take advantage of. But, again, it put us in great position. But I thought, again, our defense early on in that ball game was exceptional. The offense took us some time to get rolling, but when we did, it was just bang, 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 we're up 14-7. Right, we had flashes in the game. You know, we win as a team, we lose as a team. And uh, offensively, we've got to do a better job of uh, keeping the chains moving on third down. Uh, and, and then defensively, we've got to do a better job of getting people off the field. And we've got to hold up against the run a little bit better. But, uh, you know, I think at, at some point in time, all phases of the game came together and they showed flashes. Was the win as big of a factor as it seemed? Again, I was in a closed box, so I, I could only hear the, the wind, mm -hmm. um, and you could see the wind on the goalpost, but how much of a factor really was it down on the field? It really was a big factor. You, you take a look at some of the passes that Malcolm missed uh, early in the game. Uh, he missed a lot of passes high. Even the touchdown pass he threw to Quentin, Quentin had to elevate and try to try to reach up and get that ball. But uh, it was a big factor as far as you know making some determinations of do we want the win and, and what quarter do we want the win and things like that. Well, it's certainly did. Again, you deferred, uh, it won the toss and deferred to the second half and again allowed to take, chose to take the, the wind instead of taking the ball. Right. It almost worked out for you because uh, you kicked off and they, they fumbled and recovered. Unfortunately, we were off sides. Right. That was probably the turnover that I think could have really put us you know, over Bethune Cookman and really put them behind the eight ball. Right. I felt like our defense was playing lights out that whole first half. I thought they did some really good things and I thought we had the momentum. Uh, coming out of the halftime. Uh, we had drove the ball down the field. Unfortunately, we weren't, weren't able to get the field goal off, but I really felt like our defense was playing good, and I trusted our defense to make sure that their offense went three and out. And I wanted to have a chance to win in the fourth quarter, so I, I really felt like, you know, if something happened where we had to kick a field goal to try to win the football game, I wanted to make the best decision possible for our football team. And again, this is, I'm trying to keep you from getting fined, but it, it had to be really frustrating with the clock situation. Um, and again, I only heard a few times where the, 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 the official referee did announce how much time was left. Um, did you learn something maybe, maybe, you know, at that point, maybe a staffers could have, you know, put it on their, you know, put the time on their iPhone or something to help you out. Um, what, what did you learn about that situation? And, and I know it had to be frustrating. Well, we're addressing some things with the conference right now. I got a couple of emails and phone calls in. So I find out how we can better move forward if yeah. that situation happens again. It, and, it, and it really seemed like it, it, we're not sitting here saying that Bethune Cookman did this and the other. They weren't, it just, it, it, they weren't doing their job. And we had the, kind of an issue against Savannah State where it mm -hmm. took a couple minutes for the clock operator to, to get some worked out. Um, but again, I think that, I mean, we were rolling. You were down in the red zone. You know, now unfortunately, Quentin, I mean, Malcolm took a sack, uh -huh. which really hurt us, um, and we weren't able to get the field goal off. But again, I felt like that was a situation where we could have gone in 21 7, 17 7. 17 7 is different than 14 7. Right. I felt like we had enough time, and that's why we did what we did. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we got to do a better job of making better decisions from the quarterback position as far as not to take a sack, like you said. So, uh, you know, you know, hindsight 2020, I feel like we could do some things different, but at the end of the day, we got to do our job. 
You know, it, it was interesting. Uh, Malcolm, again, I thought he played pretty well. He got, had a lot of pressure on him. Didn't get sacked a ton. Is that like the next step for him? Obviously, there's some other things, but I guess getting rid of the football and not taking a sack in that situation, just knowing when when is it not a good time to take a sack? Right. You know, if he's going to separate himself from being one of the top quarterbacks in the conference, that's what's going to be able to separate him, the ability to make decisions in big games. You know, we feel like that he, he's growing as a quarterback and, you know, he's made some good decisions on the other night. But it, it also, too, there were some times we felt like he could have threw the ball away, he could have ran the football. Mm -hmm. And he's just got to continue to make good decisions. And he will get better. He is getting better. Uh, he didn't play bad at all. But, you know, we have to grow. And, and great quarterbacks are going to find a way to win the football game and, and put the team on their shoulders. Now, Coach, I need, I'm going to have to see your, your – uh, your laminated sheet that you bring out to every game because I think I swear you have on there 50 yard touchdown plays. You've got I think four of them this year that I can wreck well five counting uh, Hasek 59 yarder against Elizabeth City State. Is it just is I mean, obviously it's a down and distance where you're on the field type thing but again you've got guys on the field that can make those plays. No doubt I mean they've been doing an excellent job. Certain situations uh, when we get on field certain field positions you know we have shot plays and, and sometimes play action uh, defenses become a little bit aggressive and we're able to go over top and, and guys are doing a good job of executing you know Quentin has a couple this year and Nas has a few as well so they're doing a good job of understanding you know certain positions on the field they have to come up with those plays. Um, let's talk about Quentin. He's the guest on the, the next segment of the program. I mean, he's kind of one of your first recruits here. Um, talk about him. I mean, he has really um, come on strong, and he's really, to me, it's, he's fun to watch just because he's so enthusiastic about the game. Talk about him and his play here in his first season. He's done a great job. You know, in the spring, uh, Quentin battled through some injuries, and he was able to overcome those injuries in the summertime. He made a commitment to staying up here in the summertime and, and working his tail off and doing the things that we required him to get bigger and stronger. Uh, and as you see, it's paying off this season. You know, he's doing a good job of coming up with big plays in critical situations. Not only is he doing an excellent job in the red zone, also on third downs, he's coming up with some big plays. So I think it's a compliment to his work ethic. Well, he just seems like he's having a ton of fun. That's just, I mean, he has a lot of enthusiasm and just got a big zest. Mm -hmm. You know, when he scores, he's just, he's the happiest guy on the field, obviously. But um, I think that the whole offense kind of feeds off that. Yeah, anytime you have success on offense, whether it's first downs, touchdowns, uh, completions, or, or positive yards in the run game, we would like to tell those guys, even though this is college football and you're a student athlete, we still want you to have a great time on the football field. You play with a lot of energy, you play with passion, good things will happen. And it certainly has for him and, and your whole offense. I know it had to be disappointing late in that ball game to not be able to move the football, but I think you proved a point uh, to the rest of this league that we're coming and we're going to make a, our moves up. And, and to put us in a position like this in your first year, a lot can be said. Another team that's uh, maybe not getting the, 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 having the success at this point, uh, Hampton, we take on them this weekend for homecoming. Connell Maynard is, comes in to this conference with the reputation of being great on offense. He did it at Winston mm -hmm. was, and, and did it in his previous stops. What, what do you see from them on film when, when you've had a chance to look at them and prepare? Very dangerous football team. Their record is no reflection on how good that football team is. Uh, they've been in many games this year. They've had chances to win. They just came out on the short end a little bit. But uh, very explosive on offense. They have some playmakers defensively. They do a good job of flying around the football mm -hmm. and making making plays. So they're a very uh, capable team of, of beating anybody in this conference. Yeah, and they put up 35 points last week against Morgan State, whose defense is one of the better ones in the league. And you just talk about the talent they have. Two words for them offensively, Jerrain Washington. Yes, very explosive player. Uh, just got to be alert for him. You know, just like all the other good running backs we face in this conference, uh, Washington is no different. When you look at Hampton in, in North Carolina Central, I think we're kind of in the same boat. Both of us have, have what we need to, to be successful. Um, we're trying to make that move up with new coaches. And, and it's a situation where, you know, it, both of us could easily get some things in order. We could be right at the top and, and beating the Bethunes in the, in the South Carolina States on a consistent basis. Right. I think when you look at both our programs, we're a couple of plays away from being in totally different spots this late in the season. And I think as the program grows, especially our program, and we you know feel some needs through recruiting and we feel some needs personnel-wise, I think you'll see us get a, a lot better. Uh, obviously, you know, year one in the program, everybody's kind of learning. But our young men did a great job of buying in and believing. And I really, you know, they're going to finish the season strong like we always preach. In, in, in the past when we've been in this situation, we've we, had, we didn't finish as strong as we could. I mean, what are you guarding against with these guys? You know, the, you know, a lot has to happen for us to be back in the MEAC title race. Uh -huh. How do you how do you 
you know, motivate this team? How do you get them in the right mindset heading down the backstretch? Well, team? first of all, it all starts with our seniors. They understand that our seniors want to go in on top. Uh, I think our senior group has never uh, been in a position to win seven football games uh, in their career since they've been here. So we want to make sure we send them out the right way mm -hmm. and we get those seven victories uh, and close it out right. Homecoming um, here in, in North Carolina Central in, in your career, what did that mean to you and, and what are you looking forward to here at Homecoming? Well, I, I tell the guys, uh, homecoming is for, for people to come back home. They already at home. So they have a football game to prepare for and they have a football game to play. So, you know, we got to do a good job of making sure we stay focused. Uh, obviously, there are homecoming activities that we're going to partake in. But at the end of the day, you know, we want to be successful on Saturday and come out on top. And it'll be a good, it'll be a great crowd on hand. So, again, you got to obviously, does it put any pressure on you as the coach knowing that there's going to be a packed house as far as putting on a great show or just you just keep the same mindset just for everyone involved? We keep the same mindset. We're going to go out there and execute and, and prepare the exact same way we always do. But we do want to play with a sense of pride. You know, we don't want to lose homecoming. We want to make uh, the alumni, fans, and, and the support staff proud of, of the product that we put on the field. And that's basically the same in any home game. Well, Coach, we wish you the best of luck, and hopefully we're talking about another home win and, and moving to 5-5 five and five on the year, 4-2 and two in MEAC play. Thanks, Chris. That is head coach Jerry Mack. When we return, we'll talk to Quinn Atkinson as we continue with Eagle Talk after this. You're on that grind, huh? trying to be like you. Careful what you wish for. No, that's not negotiable. We have to make sure the contract is tight. It's in the brief. Check paragraph five. I'm on my way out. What are you studying? Statistics. I flunked that. Have a good night. Hey, you forgot something. No, nah, man, that's you. Big Mac extra sauce, right? Right. Sometimes being deeply rooted, thanks, means being simply connected. Wake up and get to Briggs Restaurants for Briggs $5.99 weekday breakfast specials. Now available from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. Just $5.99 for Briggs weekday breakfast specials. Available only at Briggs. Welcome back to Eagle Talk. I want to remind you it'll be a 2 o'clock kickoff for homecoming 2014 as North Carolina Central takes on Hampton. We'll be on the air at 1.30 for the Denny's of Durham pregame show. Joining us here on the second segment of the program, Quinn Atkinson, the Raleigh, North Carolina wide receiver who joins us here in his first season. Quentin, first of all, thanks for joining us on Eagle Talk, and how are things going, buddy? Oh, no problem. Things are going well. You know, I really can't complain right now. Well, talk about the game against Bethune-Cookman. I mean, we came out, had a halftime lead. You know, you had a big touchdown that put us up and right. put us in position to get back in the ball game. Talk about that game and, and how you felt like the team played. Um, really, first half we played. We played really well on um, defense. I was I was really proud of our defense. Our defense really was stepping up, coming up right into the challenge and um, offense. We were moving the ball. We had a couple three and outs in the first half, but we rose to the occasion and also and uh, we scored and uh, we had a nice little lead going into halftime. What was the talk in the locker room, you know, as you guys headed in there? You took a 14-7 lead, could have had more. What was the talk? I, I feel like the, I'm sure the locker room was pretty fired up when you guys went in there. Right. We, uh, our main thing was to stay focused and uh, stay consistent. And uh, one of our um, seniors, C.J. Moore, uh, he had a pep talk with us, and it really inspired us. But at the end of the day, Bethune came out a little bit stronger, and – they, uh, they got us at the end. Well, and you talk about that, that second half. It had to be frustrating not being able to move the football. And, and what do you feel like we could have done better? Is Maybe you could have done better to, to get us, you know, moving the football a little better in the second half. Um, it, was, it, was, it was very frustrating not being able to move the ball. But, I mean, at the end of the day, when you got 
our defense, our de their defense was playing well as well. Second half, they came out a little bit better, and we got to better execute during that time period. For you, your first season here in North Carolina Central, transferring from Georgia Military, right. how do you feel like you're playing, and how do you feel like you've adjusted to the this the FCS level? Uh, my first season, I'm I'm really having fun right now. Um, towards the beginning, you know, it was really slow, and then next thing you know, it kind of picked up towards UNC Charlotte game, and I really was. I was more focused, and I got to playing well then. Yeah, and you, know, we, you and I kind of talked about this in a pregame interview in a prior contest, and I said it seemed like you know maybe you were a little bit nervous, you know, trying to get into the the, the into the swing, right. um, and you know they were trying they were trying to get you the ball at Lizard City State, right, and, yeah. and, <laughs> and it just didn't seem to to, to quite work yeah, out. We had about five goals, and I missed like several of them, but. I got more focused. I was more determined. Like, yeah, whenever the ball comes my way, I'm be determined to catch this. Do you think that going through that kind of settled you down a little bit? It, it did. It did. Knowing that I don't have to panic when the ball comes to me, I just gotta calm down and focus more. Well, I mean, you you go back and look at your highlight tape online. I mean, you made plays right. and you make plays, and you've you've shown that here. Um, talk about that first touchdown against. Um, Towson, the 50 yarder that really got us going. Oh, that one, I, <laughs> we've been practicing that play. It was, it was kind of new installment. We've been practicing that play and we've been, we was executing all week and we caught in the game and it worked to perfection. And, and to me, I just, to me, I, you know, I'm, I'm the type of guy that I played receiver growing up. So when I see receivers doing well, I like to, to watch them during the game. And you just seem to be, I guess you said this earlier, you seem to just be having a ton of fun. And I think it, I think it, 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 it spreads to the rest of the team. Right. I mean, football, I enjoy it because, you know, it, it doesn't last forever. And every, like I said, every opportunity, I try to take advantage of it. So I like to have fun while I'm out there. Well, last week when you scored your touchdown, you post, you did your little thing <laughs> to the wrong camera person. You did it to their camera. You got to find justice on the field. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Because <laughs> you, you know, you got to find him. You got to find justice. I'm find justice. <laughs> find justice. Um, Quentin, again, you know, What's your major, and what, what do you want to do when you get done here in North Carolina? I actually am a mass comm major, and I would like to have my own TV show, sports TV show. Sports TV show. Yes, sir. You can. You want to do this one? I, I won't mind doing it. <laughs> we'll have Quentin Atkinson host this show one time. Say no, no more. <laughs> seriously though, um, when you when you what what makes you want to do this as a career? Um. I, to be honest, I mean, I still want to be involved in sports when I get done. So, I mean, I'm just taking advantage now, going on, study the techniques of what I got to do to be in this field. So, that's what I want to do. Well, that's, it's, I tell you what, it's fun. It's a fun, very rewarding field. You get to talk to kids like you and yeah. kind of get to, you know, I, I get to watch football for a living, basketball, same thing. Right. Um, you know, for you as a student athlete you know, here at North Carolina Central, what brought you here coming from Georgia Military? Well, um, the, the coach that recruited me, Coach Buck, he really pushed uh, being home, and that really dawned on me. I've been away from, I was away from home for two years, and being back home, that also was fun too. Being in front of my my family and the fans were real close to home from Riley, and so that that played a major part. I've, I haven't met your father, but I've seen him in the stands. Right. You know, he's very, very, you can tell he's very proud of you. He is. Talk about him and, and your relationship with him. Oh, my dad. He, <clears throat> my father. Um, he actually got me into football when I was six. So, ever since then, I've been playing it, and he's come to all the games, and he's a very big supporter of me. What does that him mean? Him and my mom. Well, uh, you know, I didn't mean to discount your mom. I just, I just remember I could remember him at a scrimmage. Uh, you know, you ran around, you didn't do it correctly or whatever, and he was like, "Come on, Quentin." Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I mean, and it's positive. He wasn't right. Like, he, he's that type of parent. And what does that mean to you? That means a lot. You know, <clears throat> I don't want to disappoint him. And things he does, he doesn't want to disappoint me or the family. So I mean, I look up to him, and that's the type of things that we have going on in the family. What's it like playing for Coach Mack? It seems like all the guys really tend to to like Coach Mack and, and like what he's done with this program. All right, Coach Mack. He's a, he's a good coach. I, there's no problems with Coach Mack. Uh, I came in with him, so I got established with the. Uh, new way of the formula of how he wants to um, play football and so I adjusted that and bought in like he said and it's, it's, it's good for us. It's interesting though I know you're being an offensive guy the, the numbers you guys are putting up has to be fun as well. Right actually yeah coming from Juco I really didn't have numbers like this so this was making me play more and play better because being, being having a better opportunity to have better stats or whatnot so yeah I'm, I'm loving this. What did you learn about yourself at Georgia Military that you're using here today? Um, I'm, dis I'm disciplined and 
you got to be mature. You got to be real mature when it comes to this. Uh, guys look up to you when you come in from different places and then you actually start to uh, do good things. Guys look up to you and you got to just be mature with every, every situation. Rest of the season, you got Hampton this weekend. I know you got to be excited about homecoming. Talk about the contest against Hampton and what you expect for homecoming. Um, the contest, it should be a good match. I mean, we're still in the process of watching film right now, so we'll better game plan against them. And homecoming, we just look to put on a great performance in front of the home, home alumni. Basically, yeah. Well, Quentin, we uh, you know we certainly if we keep doing the things we're doing, All right. We certainly will will put up the numbers. When you look at the re the rest of the season, the chance to to finish with a winning season, right. To get seven wins, how, what does that mean to you uh, coming here and to turn this team around real quick? That just means we got a, we got more to work for next year. Next year, I mean, it was it was I was it's disappointing to not beat Bethune, to have a, another chance to go ring chasing. But at the end of the day, we know what we can work towards. So we bring most, mostly everybody back, and we'll be ring chasing again next year. Well, hopefully that is the case, Quentin. We'll have to have you on as the, the guest host of the program maybe one All of these right. days. <laughs> All right. Don't hold me to it. Um, maybe so. Anyway, Quentin, thanks for your time, buddy. No we problem. wish you the best of luck this week against Hampton. Thank you. That is Quentin Atkinson. We'll wrap up this edition of Eagle Talk right after this. Why should you join Team 23? The biggest savings. The best selection. The championship service. A lifetime guarantee. The best value. The people. There's only one team, Team 23. Team 23 means your engine is guaranteed for life, free oil changes for life, and much, much more. Michael Jordan Nissan is Team 23. Isn't it time for you to join Team 23? Michael Jordan Nissan, 15501 North of I-40. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. North Carolina Central University is one of our nation's most prized assets. Our law school ranks fourth in the nation for clinical opportunities. We offer cutting edge technology in the biosciences. We help students master their craft. At North Carolina Central University, we are a first choice premier institution. We thank you once again for tuning in to the homecoming 2014 edition of Eagle Talk. Again, we'll be on the air at 1.30 for the Denny's of Durham pregame show to get you ready for the big matchup against North Carolina Central in Hampton, live from Kelly Riddick Stadium. You can also watch the game online at nccueaglepride.com. Again, stay up to date with all 14 sports at North Carolina Central by checking out our official website again, nccu eaglepride.com. For all the folks here at the Ferris and Newton Communications Building, I want to thank you for tuning in. I also want to big, send a big thanks to Felicia Casey Hicks, the TV studio manager here at North Carolina Central, along with her students who do a great job as well. We see you this weekend. Enjoy the ball game. So long, everybody. North Carolina Central is going to be picked Pick up. up and knocked for by Tim Daniel. There picked up now by CJ Moore. CJ Moore, no one even. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.